Hi, this is Sovereign Key Lauda Leone, and I'm delighted to have Odd Tellis and Aurora MH today. And we're going to be discussing a various uh, amount of subjects which have to do with the mind, the consciousness, the state of energy and frequency, and the manifestation of reality through uh, new dimensions or shall I say, um, dimensions that we are now beginning to be able to perforate beyond the veils. So beyond the inner and the outer veils. We're here to talk about, um, we didn't even talk about in the outline, the veil system, which is probably, you know, like a, the crux to all of this, the hinge to the changes taking place, the, the, the nature of acceleration or resistance all these things that we consider the, you know, the, the, the fundamental aspects of what controls or uh, propels us in a way, not propels, but motivates. And then, uh, you know, just to keep this short, just what you said, the mind consciousness manifestation frequency of things is, you know, I kind of in my mind thought like, well, that's like the system. It's like a mind consciousness manifestation frequency system that we use to, to, to uh, exist or, or, or experience. And then just the, uh, the kind of twist is that there's processes in this system in the way this is organized that pretty much you could, you could say it's inefficient or it's inaccurate or somebody, you know, did it in a bad way, but it's basically, it takes energy that is brought into it and recycles that energy into its own structures in a way that doesn't incorporate the core values or maybe the core reality and timelines and blueprints, all that stuff of what we consider life to be, or possibly what life must be and what life simply is if you look at what must be and what things are. So we're in this kind of um, artificial way of doing things and whether that's just this trend we're in or whether the motivations or the, the reasons behind that is this interdimensional a malicious system or whether this is just the nature of consciousness and we're working through these things or whether it's all of the above is a uh, part of the information and we should have a good good talk today so thank you and exactly and i just want to say before aurora um does her introduction is that in essence i feel as though everyone is becoming conscious of their own consciousness so it's like the mind of god realizing it's the mind of god and up until now, we've been experiencing it in terms of, quote, the body relationship that we've had to this, but it has been very, um, very cut off from our very own mind. So we have only been able to experience one, one quadrant. And now the quadrants are starting to open up, which we're beginning to see, you know, this is where the mind of God is 360 and not like 45 degrees in essence. So, but we're just going to go into that on deeper levels on all levels. So Aurora, your introduction. Uh, thank you for, for having me on your um, talk on your show. Uh, it's an honor to connect with both of you. Um, I am just an experiencer. I've heard just a lot of things happen to me and uh, the information that's been coming through. I feel uh, we've been sharing it from various places as we're going through the fractalization is how I would experience it as well of uh, certain time stamps in inverted brackets of events. So, uh, yeah, um, I'm very happy and raring to experience, to, to go through all of the information with you guys and, and also contribute. Um, in from the knowledge that I feel has also been coming to me as well. Thank you for that. If we look at the way that, that this type of consciousness has been experiencing itself through all of the different experiences that basically have created the state that we're in now, uh, I feel as though we are seeing a division occur and this division is um, it no longer, the past no longer applies. Nothing is applicable anymore because we have come to a place where it's almost new territory. Um, for some of us, 
it's not new territory because we've come in with this, but it's new territory in how the consciousness itself is experiencing itself for the first time. And in this way, you can say that the sun, you know, because every world has a sun and the sun itself is what is the representation of life. But we are the sun. We are that sun. When we become aware of ourself being that sun, mm -hmm. then I feel as though um, everything that has led up to that has just been almost, it's like we said, like an echo. Like it's, uh, we walked through shadows or silhouettes of the experience and what we feel was a physical manifestation, but it really wasn't. It was just kind of leading up to the physical manifestation. A lot of this is perception based, if not everything, and the key to understanding it. And so there's just like a, we'll run into these riddles where it's seen, what we see physically and what we see perceptually, what we perceive is linear. It's like physical, you, you knock something over, it falls because you did it. But when we perceive how things are actually happening based upon what's happening to who, you know, maybe the higher self or the, the, the being that's actually experiencing it, it's backwards as if we're doing it, we're, we're adding the input to, to manifest that. And uh, it can go a whole lot deeper, but yeah. From personal experience here, there's a lot of uh, going backwards and adding in, like, like I, I would call it timestamps. So, uh, there's no, I don't have any other word to call it as I, I call it as I see it, um, for what it is. Um, there's a lot of that past uh, experiences that are actually being put back into place. Almost, it's almost like a, a, a in a, a reverse memory swipe. It's, it's, it's how I would explain it that I'm experiencing here in in this particular country. Um, where everybody's experiencing all of um, themselves. It's like it's for the first time, but it's also not. So there's this whole familiarity to it as well. And also in my own personal life, in timelines that I remember as well, that I lived in, um, there's putting all of those keys back in. Um, it's almost like, uh, yeah, I would say it's very similar to... Um, Re, re, being born into yourself, your original self. It's, yeah, it's, well, yeah. Re, it's yeah. a reverse birth, so we're coming yeah, from yeah, a reversal. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Although yeah. I do, I do feel that for those that have that experience from the very beginning of that going back to what you were at the beginning. I don't, I, I don't feel it's happening to everybody. I feel that there is, no. that there is, uh, like I said, variations that are gathered in a collective consciousness, but it's not complete. Although the weight that is being carried by the collective consciousness of this stronger energetic, which is in connection with the universal compression that's occurring, I feel is what is expanding this to and accelerating it beyond so that even the other, you know, co-collectives or the sub-collectives are um, kind of almost being carried mm -hmm. in essence to yeah. a, a point of what they can handle. Yeah. It's like current. Yeah. Okay. I'm doing my thing, taking notes, which I stopped doing for a while. I actually wrote uh, the, uh, so you said something about the, uh, the, the nature of how many things are being done. And then there are others that are experiencing it differently or delayed yes, or not yes, at all, possibly yes. that there are different collectives and then an incomplete collectives present kind of, and that kind of outlines how it got to that and what's going on. There's stress. And then you, you started to describe how uh, the, the, there's still pressure happening, which is causing the expansion. And I wrote like stress weighted the collective carry well carried is handled by smaller groups who are carrying the species forward. And I wrote that before you begin to and you use like the same words. So it's weird. <laughs> but um it's, it's part of you know what's going on. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything we're talking about here is so uh and so interesting, but it's it's uh it's hard to describe. It's it's 
a different type of consciousness cognition where you, people call it out of the box and all these these ways okay so it's an abstract way of thinking and then the you know the way we're noticing beyond perception through maybe higher awareness whatever you want to call that some subtle interaction we're getting information that's giving us a bigger picture that shows that the linear version of time is kind of doing this and going over here and then somebody's putting that putting that together and then maybe this whole part gets colored differently and uh so there's two things there that i kind of want to say it real quick is simple uh that that's simply just the extra-dimensional nature of the universe which is that the consciousness model we're using as a kind of physical format as if you know the camera uh itself is the the information that's that's taking it in doesn't doesn't work uh because we have all this these extra processes from one single moment of what's happening because you basically it's an extra dimensional system to incorporate consciousness and uh, m matter along with these higher senses, but as well, the true nature of time, uh, you know, basically the nature of time and events, uh, call it creation, manifestation, change, and ultimately like the origins of the species and the, the, uh, you know, inconceivable ultimatum of the species, which is, you know, the infinite. So it's inconceivable is consciously, which is part of the reason where it's, almost as if we're in a conscious virtual environment mm -hmm. because this consciousness can't access the whole picture. Something has to be able to, because what else is there? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and so then, uh, the, the only, I made a whole list and there's a lot for, uh, but I'm not going to go into too much. Um, I don't want to like block up the, the airwaves, but, um, it, yeah, uh, maybe there was one other thing, but I'll say I'll make two more things, which is that, uh, the, the reverse memory swipe thing is part of the interest when the, that to put the nature of what's happening into simple terms and distinct words it gives you the idea of what it simply is but when it gets that idea it seems like it must be the opposite of what it is for instance how do you reverse memory swipe yourself or wipe yourself and end up as a different person intentionally but it kind of wrap and you wrap it back around if we have to come into the system or if the perception is kind of the consciousness is inverted from the larger set or sense that you couldn't have without having that internal process, which is begins to go into the reality bubbles, time bubbles, perceptual bubbles, and that there really is no single true view, but simply that we're all, we should realize we're in these bubbles and kind of bounce around in ways that we can kind of go in a general organized trend instead of trying to one person's bubble trying to take over everybody else's or however that's, you know, going to work. And it, it kind of goes goes into that direction, uh, but uh, it's it's basically a reverse memory swipe or wipe is a paradox. It's not something that happens, but that's the true nature of how this is perceived, at least from the conscious level. Because from the higher level, it wouldn't seem like that. It would seem as if uh, simultaneously, everything going insane, but in a safe way, as if we're seeing the whole thing as we're watching ourselves forget who we are and go into this other world and then return back and have that. You know, I mean, imagine that experience. Probably like going to a fair and then maybe maybe even losing your parents and then run, running back finding them and you know whatever happens from there and then uh but so i just wanted to stretch that one into how you you were like it's kind of like a reverse birth and so it's just that yeah. the true nature of existence is a kind of radical parad an ontological paradox involving autopoiesis in which the entity that seems to be motivating what we are experiencing has always existed and therefore must have the power to create itself or auto generate. But uh, in the same sense, it goes back to the paradox of becoming ourselves in that we're never fully complete because we're never fully there yet who we are in that sense never becomes who we are not going to be, but are heading towards. And in that sense, we never actually change. So we never become anyone other than who we are. So there's this crazy, basically when you, and scientists, psychologists, you know, everybody, when you look, you get this type of idea of reality that there are perceptual illusions that seem to be biologically and anatomically involved in our way of perceiving reality and the self. It's not that it's an illusion and it's a bad thing. It's that's just the mechanism of the way it works. And in the sense, it's not such that uh, the illusions are kind of failures for, you know, what we're, we're here and what we're seeing is that we, ha we, we have an opportunity to, to take control and experience things in such a way. And this is just the way that that has to be. We, we could, if, if we, I'll, I'll wrap it up, but if we, uh, 
when we see the whole picture, there's no way to have this experience without going through what we've gone through. And in that sense, we went through it for the experience so that we could have it, which doesn't make sense, but it does uh, at least uh, at certain times. Yeah, I think we had to forget to remember, essentially. And in forgetting, then we have the experience of what our manifested state of consciousness is in its ego. So if you think of, if you think of what we've experienced in terms of even the history of our evolution and how slowly that happened over however many thousands of years in this last cycle. Okay, this is kind of fascinating because when you look at that, you see how slow it all went. Almost as though the state of consciousness really, 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 really got stuck. Mm -hmm. And then, just like that, in the past 150 years, it just sped and accelerated to such a degree that now we're at a quantum acceleration of its own consciousness, of its own mind. But a part of our experience through the manifestation of the state of perception in flesh reality, which is really not flesh reality yet, it's almost like we're, we're trying to get to the place for that. But we have lived inside the dream of what it's like to create that... Um, platform or that stage to experience it as much as we can through um, every form of perception that we have available but we haven't quite got there yet and this is a part of what's happening in the compression energies and the accelerant is that uh, you know when we create a time we created essentially a death stamp Mm. And the death stamp that we did was a part of our um, eraser, you know, the, the eraser that would just lock us into a different form of experiencing, quote, our reality or our ego in terms of you have an ego and an ego tells you that you are, you know, I am that I am because I am that I am mm. or because even I question that I am, I am. If I don't question that I am, then I'm not, right? So the ego sort of had that, that journey within itself. The death stamp meant that there was a lot of, you know, recycling and changing. And even, you know, because I always say there's no mistakes. Even all of the technologies that are in existence where, you know, they're taking consciousness and they're splicing DNA and they're, in, you know, inserting consciousness into, you know, other vessels. It's another aspect of experiencing self, the, the mind of the self. Because really, at the end of the day, it is all going into the mind of, quote, God, whatever this experience is. So there are no mistakes, even if we've experienced bad things. Mm. Not really in the bigger picture. And then we look at the veils. So, you know, I want to look a little bit deeper into the compression, into how the dimensional walls are bleeding through in convergence while this acceleration is happening and also while it's altering the DNA and the atoms. While it's altering the DNA and the atoms, What's happening is that that in itself means that a different level of consciousness is opening up. So we're essentially creating a new, a new, a new universe yeah. of experience. It's literally a new universe. One that was not made available before. So the energies that are able to come through now, I don't feel we're able to come through before. That wasn't capable of happening unless we all brought it in here and expanded everything. So, you know, and within those collectives, there's a, an expansion and a re retraction as we, um, we go through the shifting and the changes to meet those energies, which actually feels like it is, you know, a very severe compression. And, you know, this is having adverse effects in many, many different ways. 
it's also having some amazing effects depending on where you are energetically and in frequency. So, but it is a whole new world. And this is where, um, you know, there are, there is new material that is coming so quickly that you can't, you can't hold on to the past anymore because it doesn't, it's of no, it doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> It's as good, like yeah. knowledge is as good as it is when you need it, it comes in and then you let it go because it gets you on to the next thing. And so the frequencies are just, you know, breaking through as this new verse is being built, really. Uh, and we're physically meeting that. So we're physically being altered so that we can meet with that, it, what we're creating because we're creating it. I actually uh may i just i'm just going to add something onto what you're saying if i may um i've had an experience of something that i would call for no better word the artifact of tribalism and uh it came to me in various ways where it was basically uh addressing metaphorically speaking okay um how great it's influence has been has been literally this is past tense now um in terms of establishing the tribal or the the tribalism aspect or the global tribal aspect or something like that um and it was part of or is part of the actual quantum um adjustment going towards a more sort of uh greater perspective of great spirit okay um and it could be similar to you know if you're going into the forest there's the big bad wolf you can decide how you want to approach it either it is a big bad wolf for you your past or you would look at it as it's just saying okay that way or this way or how you deal with it within yourself um the bleed through uh of that would definitely be things of things to challenge one's aspect towards one's own tribal behavior and i'm using the word tribalism because it is at as we speak right now um something that is to be that is being questioned that is being adjusted towards becoming more in this way or in that way depending on their on the what their inspirations are um, and this is in general now everybody's going through that um, so are you yeah. are you bringing in the primordial frequency yeah. that is being stuck in its primordial um, yes, correct. limitate like it's not wanting to expand it wants to stay inside its primordial exactly. essence exactly because of the, the the predominantly the belief in keeping it in a stationary or static position uh, by beliefs. But that's what has been happening for the most part from the very beginning of right. creation, I guess you could say in the mind of itself. It yeah. some, but you know, again, right? This is, this is probably one of the most scary things anybody or anything or any being can figure out is itself in its own experience yeah it's far more terrifying to experience yourself in all that you are in creation from the very beginning to the very end to the very beginning more so than it is coming out of the deep more so than it is coming out of a void so mm. the closer you come in inside your mind with your ability in exactly existence and creation it is there's a terror attached to it because it means everything literally will be experienced it means yes. there is nothing that you will not at one point meet be become do and your own mind accelerates the experience out of its own control and mm. this is where we have the sense that we've given it up to something Yes. You know, in the experience of our own creation. Yeah. It's so, to look at your, sh sorry, it's to look at your former shadow to actually make peace with it. So and I, the hurting mentality 
is the thing that minds congregate to in collectiveness. And this is the thing that stagnates worlds because that collective creates an energetic cell that mm. keeps that reality locked in on that level. So then you have others who come in and through their own consciousness, because it's already gone through all that, is able to push through. But you're always meeting, um, you're meeting the energy almost like a, I mean, the, and, and, and sometimes I think this is what, you know, the war, the, the war of heaven and hell that everybody talks about, it's our own war. It's our own war with our own consciousness and our own minds and our own rejection of our own selves in the mind of our own creation. Mm. So like that division, that split that happened, right? So we play ourselves off of ourselves and you just add and attach the collective mind to that and it gives power. It creates, uh, it creates its own reality, its own world. And you can choose to stay in that. So the primordial essence can say, or these tribal mentalities can say, yeah, well, this is how we've done it forever. And why change it? Mm. It doesn't, the, the energies that are in place right now, they're pushing this out of existence. They're pushing the, the old universe out. So it's not really going to matter. They're going to be forced to deal with the reality that they create, but on a different platform, on a different um, in a different state that is much more, uh, it's like the magnification, you know, where it's no longer experienced as a dream or as a part of a dream. It's going to be more real, whatever that is. But, you know, the only one that will trap them is them. The only one that can trap yourself is yourself, your own mind. Yeah. yeah. I, I agree. Um... I feel that this particular self entrapment is also perhaps chosen. So it's also willingly done as well. Um, and then there are others that are not obviously moving on from it. We're not speaking about a particular group of people, but, but in a general speaking here, I have to bring this here because this is where I'm yeah. seeing it. Yeah. Not anywhere else as much. I think it's everything. I think everything is like everything is being experienced and everything is yeah. true. So like whatever you are is what's true. <laughs> and like and yeah. how you're going to experience what you're going to experience. But outside of that all there's something that is so the ego eventually comes to the place where it doesn't need to experience itself the way it's been experiencing itself. Now it's a new a new mind. And that new mm. mind doesn't really, it can shed now the, this type of interface experience with quote, the ego body mind state of being. And this is where we're going. We're going to that, you know, this is, this is eventually going to um, tear while it's going to split open all of the veils. It's doing it now more and more. So what we're mm. seeing, is we're seeing glitches. We're seeing, uh, we're starting to see into the true, you know, fabric of, quote the realities we've created and they're all like being dismantled and that as that happens um what people are going to be witnessing on a deeper level is going to either like push you forward or it's going to you know it's it's going to be too much so you're going to you know you're you're going to experience that uh fracture within your own mind the splitting yeah. the splitting is happening yeah. whether people are like like it or not it's happening so how that split is yeah. going to be determined de is determined by your consciousness yeah why what you're willing to you know let go of and you know become yeah. what you yeah. always were you, you we're just it isn't like it's like when og said you know we're coming from the we're being this is all like a reverse experience mm. But in the reversal, having allowed ourselves to forget everything, we're walking through, and we may have walked through this many times, just because, you know, there's a part of our own consciousness that I think 
really, really liked being asleep. Mm. Like you want to escape. You know, that's what they're doing literally physically in the physical form. You want to fall asleep because you want to actually escape the situation well, in I some just, ways. I just think if you're creating uh, your own experience in how you experience your own creation and you get to create a world where you you have all these sensations and you can become lulled by it mm. and, and stay in that. This is why like, when you look at history, history really didn't move forward. No. Why is it that we move forward the way we moved forward only in the last 150 years? Because I think... In the way that we, we managed have. to break through. Because I think, I, I, I feel that we managed to break through. Right, but yeah. I mean... Yeah. We have thousands oh. of years where we didn't. No, well, probably because we had a lot of. But we other... did. We did and we didn't at the same yeah, time. Yeah, we did it a few times on and off. Mm -hmm. I, I recall a few times on and off, mm -hmm. various times. I think we've exceeded the, the platform of creation that we've like done in this experience. So now we have we're going into the new, the next phase. And I feel like the next phase, part of this compression energetics that are coming in with these new frequencies, um, they're actually destroying the death particles um, from even the way that we perceive life. So the way that we perceive life and we have been perceiving life in this experience is, is for the template of the old universe but that no longer is that's no longer going to be in existence for what we're creating in this new uh splitting this new universe well multiverse um that we're going into but um for the transition to occur it's going to be a little bit of everything depending on whatever the experience is of how people actualize their own reality because how you actualize your own reality is how you experience it in essence so yeah. the part of the compression energetics that are coming in is a densification it's densifying the material experience of that actuality of that experience in life um on the template that we've created mm -hmm. so it's not it's not like it's not the reverse it's not an ascension at all it's a descent no. it's going deeper in manifesting uh quote reality we're solidifying it, yeah. Solidifying, yeah. 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 Uh, that's, yeah, that's from the observation point of view where the expression is becoming an actual event, yes. Yes. And that's what I call the, um, that's part of what is the convergence of the event horizon. Yeah. And this is where all of the dimensions that are converging, which is all experiences. So if we've exceeded how we've experienced creation and ourselves in the mind made manifest state of being, we've exceeded that reality. You know, when I think of uh, the way that I perceive even the memory of my quote, this body's upbringing, it's like it never existed. Oh. It's like, it's not mm. there. Interesting. You mentioned that myself. Uh, the only time I'll know, I'll remember it, would be through noted moments like pictures or something like that. Mm -hmm. And even then, when I look at pictures, I can see, was I really there? Mm -hmm. And it's sort of like having your own, <laughs> I hate this word, but it's being used over and over like a cliche. It's like I'm experiencing my own Mandela effect, except I'm just like moving on, you know, so the mm -hmm. rope just goes mm -hmm. further on sort of thing but yeah 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 it does have an effect on the dna as well obviously because this is a neurological adjustment to 
through the um, quantum events, mm -hmm. so to speak. It feels like it's like the event horizon is more cluster of events. I don't know. Well, it is. The, it's a convergence of all dimensions. It's a convergence yeah. of all uh, universes and all the bubbles and all the. It's just yeah. literally a convergence. And part of the energetic waves of these compressions, it's it has to compress inward, downward, expand yeah. it because yeah. it's going into a deeper state of existence that yeah. is going to be where the spirit and the body unite yeah. more in a physical state, not where your body is experiencing this. And then you're, you're, you're having to try and attach yourself to the spirit and its memory. Yeah. You know, where there's everything that comes in between that, um, in perception to augment the state of reality because it's not merged. Yeah. And it's only one aspect of it. So really, the experience has only been one aspect, one aspect that is slowly widening its eyes, like the eye is getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So it just it ends up being able to perceive a wider aspect of reality. You know, I mean, the interesting thing about the mind or the eye of, quote, God, us, our consciousness, is that there is a perception of it from the outside and the inside and both of them are coming from polar opposite extremes and in this is where you could easily get the um the contradiction or the um you know the extremely different um way of experiencing itself one comes from the very end and the beginning of itself being everything that it already is and was and the other one comes from the reverse aspect of having to walk through your own absence of being to get back to the point of your origin so in that sense you're rediscovering yourself mm. it's almost like the what you describe is like there's something that's all that is and then that travels into a kind of virtual cognition of what could be or has been. And then it's as if we go from there to there and then back and gain information based on that process. So it's basically like a kind of ontological or interdimensional, even extra dimensional uh, experience or messaging system where something, you know, based upon pure awareness is moving through phases of awareness based upon the contrast of the environment and how all that has to play out and then going back so it almost looks like a communication system where somebody's going over here and like throwing a symbol up and somebody over there waves back and that's the idea it's like two beings on other ends of time are waving at each other and it's the same being though that's like the paradox that we experience it and, and as well it there's some been going through so many ideas lately it's like the temporal membranes that separate the interdimensional time zones of experience that we describe as, you know, the different rates of acceleration of each individual, we could always, it's like if we see the bigger picture as a society and we look through the end or the, the membrane is a whole deep way of explaining this with gravitational lensing and the uh, ultra dense superfluids of space and quantum tunneling and so on and gravitational lensing from the light bending. So it curves back onto yourself. But the idea is that uh, onto the viewer, the observer, um, which is kind of the extra dimensional or out of body nature of the universe that when you look far enough, it curves and reflects and you're looking at yourself, but you see something different. And so, but the idea is if we look through that lens and we see people over there and we wave to them and they look and they wave back, we could go over there. And when we get there, we'll be there and we'll think we were always there and we'll look at people and we'll see them waving and we'll wave and the same process will happen, but they might wave first and then we'll pause for a second and look around and wave back. And we don't realize that it's happening at the same time with the same awareness, but we're in this kind of rotational system where we're getting these perceptual illusions. And it's as if it's temporally uh, not distinct, but, but, but uh, seems perceptually separate, but it's a complicated, uh, and it's also, it's a different entities. It's, it's, a, it's like a, a mirror system. It's like an interdimensional virtual mirror system. And all we're doing is checking ourselves in the mirror and then, you know, doing whatever we do 
on top of that and, and throughout that. And uh, it's hard to, you know, connect all the other aspects into that, you know, b about what's going on. But you know, it takes a lot to get to that, but uh, I'm at least going through these notes I have here, but I mean, that's all I had to say. And it, it, well, it's good. we it's created a false mirror within well, that reality. And this is part of like, we fell into the false mirror version. Okay. Let me, let me say a little bit more. Cause <laughs> you, you spoke on that and then there was a little bit I wrote that I'll, I'll, you know, it's a good risk analysis that I'll go into without, you know, getting distracted, <laughs> distracting myself. Um, and it's a weird thing. It was, uh, Aurora, I think, said this, and I'm just going to kind of like put it into my, my words. Or, yeah, she said it, adding on to something you said about the convergence or the, the like nexus point of experience. Yeah, I, from, I said that. The which is different than horizon. linearly. And so what I'm going to say based upon something she said is that the spiritual growth we're experiencing is basically a series of interconnected mandala effects that result in the consciousness we perceive to have had the other side of the what becomes the mirror now um diverging or dissociating or going through this dark night of the soul this process which is actually diverging from what becomes the phantom reality blueprint which is kind of like a corrupted non-local temporal incursion meaning somebody incorporated the ideals of another reality into the blueprint of this one through various means mind control uh, psychotronic harassment um all types of uh, indoctrination, all types of things of warfare. And that goes into then the, the spiritual war of heaven and hell, which is the same thing. It's just a reflection system, a mirror it's happening within us as well as around. And then the, uh, the result is that, uh, we seem to manifest transition or just, it's kind of like we kind of woke up here. We've been getting here, but as well, we didn't get anywhere. We're just here. Um, which is also part of the paradox that we never actually got anywhere. We've never left. But, um, and, and we go into a, the, the corresponding the physical material body of the corresponding universe containing the appropriate adjustments and parameters for what isn't the next level of acceleration or we're going to do a lot of things, but all things included basically uh, unlimited growth. And so we go from a, it, to conclude that it's like the journey is to go from taking steps to basically moving at the speed of light with our mind experiencing and, and really the, the game is that it's not, we go, we're on a, uh, a, a merry-go-round and we start spinning super, super fast. It's the fact that we realize we're one point of the merry-go-round and we yeah. move through that center convergence point and the equivalency of motion in that place is taking all of the motion simultaneously and, and having it at one point together, which would be saying it, it, it's all happening at once or it's unlimited or it's simultaneous or it's moving beyond the parameters of the projection on the outside on the inside because at that point it's actually moving or going anywhere it's simply rotating which is more of a, a perceptual or a, a frequency shift or an axonal or axial uh change instead of like driving anyway right. yeah and we'll be able to stay lucid as opposed to going and lapsing into these you know the sleep the slumber the death all of these uh you know it's all a part of the keeping us protected from our own minds because we can't handle the full conscious level. So when we reach that state, we'll be able to be able to handle it and create really the experience, the full experience, not just parts. Would I also, another way to add maybe is that the merry-go-round or the, the, the cycles, the wheels or so on, if you turn that into a, what is it, a point line or line circle, uh, what is it, like it's a, there's a ratio and then there's like a diagram where basically you, um, you take the motion of a point on that circle and graph it linearly on a chart indicating time and uh, space or motion. And you get an up and down, you get a sine wave, you get, you get cycles. And for, for that to happen, it's like you, there's a loop. For this loop, we're basically going in circles, we're going up and down. And so with that format of experience, we have these these uh it's like something turning on and off it's like a binary system it's basically it's it might be not designed for something but it might be like using wheels that are too big for a car and we're just something is out of alignment so we're spinning out here where we should be like you know focused like a laser in there realizing or, or, or more so we could be focused in the point but those places still exist and we're focused here seeing how they are existing and how they are, are taking place but the awareness that would be 
there would technically be in the center. We'd be the guy in the center spinning in circles in the, in the merry-go-round instead of the, the, the kids on the right on the outside. But when the two are connected, it's simultaneous. You're there while being there. Instead, yeah. you're only thinking, we're only having the experience physically here on the outside of the projection. So because it's focused first on that, it's as if it cuts out or it excludes that second or that, that prime, that, that, not primal, that, that internal or first initial uh, awareness. And in that sense though, it's not, a, it's as, it's, it's as if our perception nar- not narrows, but uh, focuses, uh, unifies, into become or accelerates into be to 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 moving into that awareness but the things on the outside don't change they don't fall away they don't break off they don't go home it's as if the awareness increases now so now instead of one awareness to itself all along it's as if now you have a collective that's aware and they it doesn't have to be that they're now communicating but simply that everything that happens is in sync because the focus is initiated first actually from the source which is the center of it which is metaphoric and so on and it goes in different ways the key also for people is not to get caught up in information according to their experiences that trap the mind in that one thing because or chasing that or what we were discussing earlier chasing the dragon where you just you never get anywhere but it's just like all these little dots on the periphery (laughs) where you know its purpose already exceeded whatever it was that you were supposed to learn move on you know it's it's done now you can just keep continuing forward but not in the sense that you just stay locked out there so in essence using that as a means by which to you know lose yourself in your own dream because really acceleration means lucidity also it means that you are completely conscious consciously aware of your your own mind your own consciousness your own state of being your soul this reminds me of the story about Narcissi who kept staring at the water, at the pond, mm-hmm. and he was eventually connecting with this mirror of himself in the mirror of the image of, obviously, because it's in a pond and it's dark in the pond, it does have a different appearance physiologically. And the more he became transfixed and mesmerized by this, this is why I feel, I think, the speed of the process of what Org was talking about, about like this merry-go-round thing and the focus and what you've mentioned as well, um, that we were essentially going towards that point of connection with the self mm-hmm. in, the mer- mm-hmm. in the mirror image of the water. And then eventually now I, 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 I feel that we're breaching that point of water head first, obviously the center point first, right? And um, then traveling into the waters of the primordial, whatever, waters, which is actually the heavenly waters, um, in that way is, is what I thought at some point. Where are we going? The image of the ego in water, the information that we have, then we have it for a reason. We use it. And if we hold it, it becomes something that corrupts us. It's, it's like it's, it, it's weird this whole, you know, the world is not actually, it's like if we hold the information in our hand and it's no longer needed and it's degraded from knowledge now to just like data, it's like we have a a piece of fruit and we've held it so long that it's rotten now and it does no good. It's not going to be useful and that the fruit of the world, the the resource, the value of life and reality is knowledge, is truth, it's self-awareness, is accuracy and presence and and, and knowing. And uh, I like the metaphor though because instead of even how it works. And this goes back. It's weird from the, the merry-go-round. That's what I, there's a couple things from, from before, but the, uh, the acceleration that occurs and what happens through the suffering that is incurred from basically resisting that internal tendency for informa- truth to organize itself. And it's almost as if that system is kind of bound by a, a self-protection to the point where the more we, the further we get from that center point, the harder it is to go until we're like frozen in time, just like up against the wall. And slowly it's going to be easier and more uh, natural to tend back in. And so hopefully when we realize what this is, it doesn't have to be this orbital thousand year cycle of dreaming and, and forgetting and waking up, um, if that's what we desire. And uh, so it's kind of it, 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 the trauma that results from not knowing the self pushes us to, to realize and wake up, which, which, you know, results in these changes. 
And it was interesting because now instead of seeing the ego in the water and realizing what's going on, the reflection became romanticized. And to extend that, you know, allegory, the face breaks through the water, destroying the illusion, realizing it's first distorted and then it's no longer what it is. But through that comes the truth of reality, the fundamental hidden underlying nature, the truth of ourselves, which is our personality, seeing ourselves unveiled for the first time beyond the image. So that was brilliant. Beautiful. Thank you for that. And then um, the other thing is that uh, as well, the trauma being a boundary built in against not waking up, it's as if the outside can't remain without the inside corresponding to everything that's occurring. So somebody's doing things or has done things out here that doesn't reflect the true, uh, the, the core of the system. And so it's natural tendency is to overwrite that, to, to edit it out, to simply unplug and connect it back to where these lines of reason and feeling and intent and, and, and being were probably before that, or, you know, however that's going to work. And before I get distracted again, there was one point back there where how this seems to be what's happening that uh, I forgot that earlier on that uh, it, it, the new uh, model, the old world based upon fear, suppression, deception, and so on, it's as if, which ultimately breaks down to separation of physicality linearly and time or linearity and time It's restricted by time and the, the, the physicality behind that. And so then the idea that the past could no longer be applicable could be perceived in two ways, possibly one and then the other. Uh, basically that if time is pretty much this backdated perception of the self that is generated by the universe or through the universe through our interactions here then and we're always changing then we could get to a point where now the past will always get to a point where the past becomes less relevant and we're, we're becoming something new or not becoming but but our me mind mentally we're, we're knowing knowing ourselves better and so then the compression the event the what you just said about acceleration and lucidity these all seem to be connected to the the concept that the center isn't in motion in reference to the uh circle moving around or the point moving around the circle creating that that sine wave the center is just a core and so then what happens lin linearly what happens to perception what happens to time to the meaning of it if we move into a phase of understanding where it's not a little bit beyond where we were. It's not a little bit faster or more in tune with what is. It's actually all the way in tune with all the in tunement that could be in tuned with. What, what happens to experience then? And so it would seem there's two ways to then understand that, that either the past has always been a virtual encoding system that's based upon our brain waves and we're actually just in one orb and wherever you look, you get a hyperbolic projection giving you trajectories into potentialities in time, space, or consciousness. And that uh, if that's what it is, this could be the point where we A, simply realize that and thus that's what it is, or B, begin to use knowledge in a way that transcends the linear accumulation of information, meaning there's a soul level access and the perceptual system no longer has to type, line it up, read it, put it in, sleep on it, store it, call it back up. That there's, a, And that's not magical. It's just the way a higher dimensional system incorporating, you know, the information of self-awareness connecting multiple planes or multiple experiences would operate. It couldn't operate in a linear fashion. It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't happen. It would take, in other words, forever. The only way to get that much information is to have it in this, uh, what was it? an exponential increase. And for that, you have the acceleration curve, which hits a certain point where now it is all or nothing. It is all at once. It is a simultaneous activation of variables of change beyond the parameters for the previous set the entire schedule the spectrum the chart the grid the matrix the limitations the perceptions are no longer applicable it doesn't work that way and we have exponential numbers we have exponential curves we have these possibilities in nature so why could it could it happen with the synchronicity a synchronization of awareness and all accumulation of being it might be that that's the only thing that ever actually always happens you know at once and you know, all these other things are just particles and things bouncing around. And uh, so at that point, uh, how things would be, how we would experience reality, um, the past, it, it would mean 
so much would open up in our potential orb of trajectories that like you said, it would be that energies in the very simple format, energies that couldn't access the system that were not applicable, that were being resisted, blocked out, corrupted, made unavailable, or eaten up and used by other people, possibly. And somebody just saw that and was like, no, don't do that. And now it's like the whole universe is changing. Um, and uh, the result of that is such a different experience. And here's like the other, I'm, I do this, I'm gonna like regurgitate all the stuff I'm thinking, but I'm, I've written down, but I'll just put that up, which is that it's as if we're being, it's being proven, not only that people have used methods to control the minds to manifest a corrupted universe that they wanted, but that automatically the mandala, the, this exponential growth, the soul being high and the spirit being the highest, that there's no pathway to that that you climb. It just has to be this quantum leap after there's enough charge built up that it may be the neurons themselves, like you said, the DNA, the neurons, the brain waves, the, the, the intentions, beliefs, they've been manipulated to control and create realities. And when that stops, it's not going to be like somebody pops up and does like a McDonald's version of it. It's never been done before after that and other than the natural. So the natural will re return again, like a, a beach, you know, uh, waves taking over a beach again. It's more likely that the waves will take over the beach the next time no one's on the beach rather than some guy just pops up. And that doesn't mean that the waves are going to like wipe everything out metaphorically, but that those waves are struggling within every one of us to pour out and bulldozers and, you know, crappy materials have been blocking everything off. But then the result of that is that those with the intent, those with the, those whose consciousness are closer to the soul intent of the circle or the, the inner uh, core of their, their spiritual or mental system will now have an increased collective influence on reality which is simply what secret groups have been doing for a long time in overpowering the rest of the population as a result. And uh, as a result, basically, we're, it's as if the collective is using our minds to reorganize energies in order to heal, if you will, the system to reappropriate energies to basically re-enable that collective to complete what this place is for or what is supposed to happen here, which uh, I guess is just knowledge of the self and uh, whatever you want to, you know, however you want to equate to that. But it's, it's that this, these events and the, these formats, these ways we're trying to explain this are describing an extra, extra dimensional mechanism of this type of holographic interface or uh, reflexivity of the internal observer to influence reality. And it, the, I'll maybe conclude that with, the the event the the breakthrough the the unveiling or whatever is possibly when enough of this occurs so that it's said or it could be you know uh considered that the primary or maybe the majority of the collective of this reality bubble is operating in that extra dimensional fashion consciously with intent instead of just these secret groups running the shows knowing they're doing it and leaving everybody else basically to wonder and feel feel and wonder why and feel the way they do but again, as well, just to add a little bit, grasping that suffering that people may feel from what has been done and what is going on, it's still part of the illusion and it's fuel. And only by overcoming that which is within the individual that wants to respond on that level of corruption, only by overcoming that actually frees us from their, their freak show you know, game. And, uh, and again, one more thing, no one is actually freed or saved or anything. It's like, we're all here doing what we're here to do and experiencing things. And it's, it's just the strangest thing, but I get the feeling that that's what, what it is. And there's no real loss in that sense. No, I agree completely. I agree because if it wasn't for everyone experience, experiencing it on the platform that they're able to conceive and create, then I don't feel we could all do this. It wouldn't be happening. No. So it's in essence one mind. You know, when we think of the word universe, which is always a word that I didn't like, it's, it's because it's undoing the I-verse. Mm. It's undoing ourselves in our own creation to get to the point where it just becomes our creation. So that's the process that I feel all of this is. And that 
state of reality that we're getting into where it is consciousness meeting intention in full lucidity so that nothing else can step in or nothing can even get in through the back door or uh, appeal to your sensibilities through seduction or any other thing that will be an agreement of some kind of an entrapment because you're so removed from yourself will not be happening because it'll things will be too conscious and those veils will not be there. You could even say that it means that the self is currently tricking the other self at this point. Exactly. Mad out over <laughs> exactly. Aurora? I feel that along with the untangling of experiences of the center point, untangling that and becoming a greater version of itself in expansioning or experiencing the, its own expansion. What I'm feeling is, is that I'm going to use myself as an example. I'm experiencing myself. I'm remembering who I, uh, where I was in the beginning of time. I'm remembering where I was when I experienced myself as a thought and having a collective sense of other thoughts of my own thoughts, like all the TVs with all the faces of myself and all the versions of myself speaking to me at the same time. It's like really weird to use that as, an, as, that as an example. And uh, I think all of it converge and expand. That, that, that would be as best as I can explain what I'm experiencing. What I feel, um, it's obviously happening as, uh, as we've now discussed in stages with various processing of the moment, each one's own moment. So yes, uh, here, this is the same thing happening as well. There is a lot of that spirit beings that are experiencing the same type of disentanglement of itself so it's like where what where, 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 where do we go you know there's a big fat one that's going to swallow us and throw us back into the cycle again type of shit it's like when you become your own god self like uh or i said you're in a sea of your own thoughts as a collective of yourself your own self and at that point it's selfless creation because you don't have that opposite self to realize that and so then we oops, sorry we expand by projecting ourselves here or coming here into an artificial projected space time which is kind of like an artificial expansion because there is no space and the spiritual expansion is learning and more clear in it, clarity and a, a more clear and awake self thoughts which occurs in collective that we really are in and belong to because we're in that sea of thoughts now waking up through the system that was quick enough i think Thank you. that is exactly it that was cool <laughs> perfect that was beautiful <laughs> uh okay so this uh wraps it up for today um thank you i want to expand on that uh later on if you both want to happy to thank for, you very much Thank you very much too. I'll organize and do a bunch of stuff because I was overwhelmed at first. There's so much information coming out and it's what I've been working with. And so, yeah, yeah. same here. So good I think maybe out. a part two will be good. Agreed? Yes. Yeah, and, and the information that y'all put out through this is literally like the stuff I'm trying to put out and waiting for looking for. So okay, I perfect. feel like at peace that y'all have, have spoken as much. So, Thank you. Thank you. so the, again, right? No mistakes. There you go. This I is mean, all out. Uh, that works. This Thank is how you. it is. So this is actually a really good example of the very thing we're talking about. Yeah. So we're going to end that. And anything. yeah, and we're going to go into part two. So thank you, everybody. And um, yeah, we'll see you in part two. Thank you. Thank you.